Welcome to the Product Design Show. I'm Allison Topperwine. The tools used in product concept design have come a long way since the first idea was sketched on the back of a napkin. In today's episode, we'll show you how these tools evolved and what's now at the leading edge of product concept design. It wasn't so long ago that ideas for new products emerged from the minds of solitary genius inventors, often without a lot of input from the rest of the world. Inventors sketched their ideas into notebooks, but they were lucky if they had the means to turn those ideas into reality. After all, it's not like you can take this kind of sketch to your local barrel maker and say, here, make this. Fast forwarding to the 20th century, large companies needed inventive minds to develop complex new products. But that same problem with communication still existed. It wasn't until the mid-1940s that drafting standards reached a common level of clarity so that design intent could be built into the drawing itself. As the story goes, a designer named Stanley Parker saw that some of the parts his team had designed were being rejected after manufacturing, even though they were working as intended. Parker realized that this error was due to the fact that the traditional XY tolerances for inspection constrain the parts inspectors too much. By creating a circular tolerance zone that fit within the traditional XY tolerance boundary, Parker created geometric dimensioning and tolerancing, or GD&T. From that point on, GD&T was used to help manufacturers understand why a designer placed a feature where they did and help manufacturers build products that were true to their original design. Moving closer to today, software tools including CAD, PDM, and analysis are becoming more common. That means that even complex design concepts can be thoroughly investigated before production. In a previous episode, we spoke with JR Automation about the critical role that product design software and processes can play in organizing the design of complex machines. JR Automation splits their large assemblies into sub-assemblies and assigns responsibility for sub-assemblies to various teams. Who can change what is controlled by a series of processes and enabled by advanced CAD software, in this case Creo from PTC. Without the aid of design skeletons and vault systems, the design work at JR Automation could easily become disorganized, with one team making changes that affect the work done on other sub-assemblies. While product design software has allowed designers to collaborate on bigger and more complex product concepts, Another important tool has helped them develop entirely new concepts. Social media can be a powerful tool for designers when it comes to brainstorming new ideas for products. Companies can call on all of their designers to submit ideas or comment on the feasibility of a concept. This way, insights from large, multifunctional teams can be leveraged to create a superior product. In addition, social media can help bring a design team closer to their core customers. By setting up forms and user groups, designers can interact with their target audience while a product is still in the concept stage. Social media tools let designers collect direct feedback from consumers, like say on a prototype. That means the first version to market can be as close to the consumer's ideal as possible. In our next episode, we'll discuss a core concept of product concept design, design thinking, and how it can help the development of your next product. Thanks to PTC for sponsoring this episode. You can see their tools that support product concept design at ptc.com slash go slash Creo Parametric. Thanks for watching this episode of the Product Design Show. Please give it a like on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube, or give us a rating on iTunes.